The eighth statement, the sword and peace. It's not a secret to any Christian believer that Christ, glory be to him, brought along the message of love and peace to the entire world. And he commanded his followers in every time and place to establish peace, where he said in Matthew's Gospel, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. And thanks to the peacefulness of Christ, Christianity became the symbol of lenience and kindness, as we remember him saying in Matthew's Gospel, Whoever strikes you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. But is this still going to be the message in the second coming as it was in the first coming? O oh, people, the returning Christ will resort to peace and love upon the first appearance for his blessed call. But at the same time, he will take his anger on those who denied him and falsified his call. And perhaps this is the first time you will hear that Master Christ upon his second coming will use the sword and fire and he will vanquish his enemies as they were vanquished before by all the believers and simple people having killed the innocent and spread corruption, famine, wars, persecution and conspiracies. All people, I tell you that the message of love and peace will do such people no good, and the sword is what they are worthy of, knowing that the Bible includes parts that support this meaning in more than one occasion, in which the holy book describes that harsh method the Lord will resort to when he will come to establish his kingdom and retrieve his usurped inheritance, where it is mentioned in the book of Revelation, Revelation 19. I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. The beast was taken and with him the false prophet who worked the signs in his sight with which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. The rest were killed with the sword of him who sat on the horse. The sword which came forth out of his mouth, all the birds were filled with their flesh. Everyone knows who the one who sat on the horse is and what his role in the last time before judgment will be. There are several other scriptures, as said by Christ, glory be to him, in which he explains the different method he will follow in the second coming, where he will use fire and sword together. As we mentioned, after dialogue with the arrogant and the skeptics is used up. For he says in Luke's Gospel, I came to throw fire on the earth. I wish it were already kindled but I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how distressed I am until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace in the earth? I tell you no, but rather division. And he also mentioned using the sword in Matthew's Gospel. Don't think that I came to send peace on the earth. I didn't come to send peace, but a sword. This is not to mention the great epic, the Armageddon, that will be against the dark and evil forces throughout the world. And that will be a great day for the Lord, where he will harvest the heads of the oppressive, tyrannical, and arrogant forces. By his shed sickle, that will not be easy on the spiteful and arrogant enemies. This is expressed in the holy book of Revelation, Revelation 14. I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and on the cloud, one sitting like a son of man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Another angel came out from the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, 
Send forth your sickle and reap, for the hour to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. He who sat on the cloud thrust his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And today we see that the grapes of the earth have ripened, and it's time for the Lord's harvest that is imminent, and we await its arrival. So, are we ready to stand on his side and discard nominations below him? Or will skepticism and lying lead us to the edge of the pit where we become on the side of the Christ's enemies at a time we think we are his followers and lovers?